Well, I don't mind. I'd be glad to. But I'm positive Mrs. Shellhammer wouldn't like it. She's a little... Say, I have an idea. We always have martinis before dinner. I'll make them double strength tonight. I'll bet after a couple of them, she'll be more receptive to the idea. Welcome to The Rank with John and Zach. I'm John. I'm Zach. We've been friends since Cub Scouts, and now 30 years later, we decided to start a podcast where we'll be ranking anything and everything. You know, the natural progression of events for millennials. You're probably wondering what credentials we have to rank anything. Well, we don't have any. And if you disagree, join the discussion at The Rank Podcast on Twitter or X, threads, Instagram, and TikTok on our website at therankwithjohnandzach.com or at our email address, uh, therankwithjohnandzach at protonmail.com. You can also support us on Patreon at The Rank Podcast. That's patreon.com slash The Rank Podcast. And you can check out clips or full episodes on our YouTube channel, The Rank with John and Zach. And please remember to rate, review, and subscribe so we can keep this thing going. A Wank. The Rank is where we rank the movie based on 10 categories. Story, acting, originality, film coherence, cinematography, score slash soundtrack, uh, script structure and dialogue, character relatability, production value, and timelessness. We're ranking it on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the worst, 10 being the best. First category is story, and I'll start. I gave story a 9. Oh, yeah. I think the story is pretty clever. I, I like that they gave it ambiguity instead of just using movie magic to say, see, there really is a Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. I think I always just assumed this movie did that, actually, and it was just kind of nice that it didn't so yeah. it's unexpected so uh what say you what do you got for story i gave it a nine um, hey all right it's kind of like it's like easy to overlook in a way because it's so ubiquitous but it is a really original story when you think about it and it's a lot of fun you know like if someone came up with that and told me i'd be like you need to make that into something because that's fun yeah so it, and and i think the execution is really good too so it really works I agree. I'm, that's funny. I did not expect us to agree on that one. So I think well, let's see how the rest of this goes. So the next category is acting. What do you have for that? Well, this is going to be funny, actually, because like I, I kind of talked like I don't like the movie, but I do. So <laughs> Yeah, you really did. I assumed you didn't like it. So that's <laughs> no, it's going to come off funny. Well, the acting, I gave an eight because I wasn't 100 percent sure what to do. The Maureen O'Hara and, as you said, shockingly, Natalie Wood were really good. And um, not shockingly, because I expected her to be bad because she's a kid. And um, Edmund White, whatever he fucking said his name was, um, he was good, but like he's also just kind of playing Santa, which is <laughs> he's kind of, of it's very it's like one dimensional. I'm yeah, kind. It, yep. That's also, I really hit people with game. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I smack people. Everybody else was kind of silly though. So like, and you were absolutely right. A lot of overacting. It feels even given the time because like Maureen O'Hara and John Payne to a certain extent were as much like that they were more nuanced everybody else was kind of cartoonish right i agree but still still good enough that i'm saying eight well i gave it a 6.75 oh so less so yeah and so it's hard because i feel like you know we decided to do one through ten because Mm -hmm. it would give us more options and yet we're we're so like afraid to go near go low yeah yeah um but the acting in this is just not great I, i so so some highlights here. Dr. Sawyer was a reprehensible character, but I actually found him to be well acted. Okay. Um, Natalie was surprisingly good, and Edmund, Edmund was pretty great as Santa. Um, the judge was awful, I thought. Um, it seemed to me that while the leads weren't terrible, they weren't very good either. You know, I don't think they were mm-hmm. bad, but like I just, you know, they were made like slightly above average, right? Um, and... I just there was a lot of hamminess and overacting throughout. I, I actually started with a lower score and brought it up some because in think, when I was just like thinking about it, I discovered I liked the acting more than I thought. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still can't put it in the pantheon of movies with fantastic acting. So you're absolutely right. I'm actually thinking of going lower, but for right now, I'm going to leave it as an eight because I need to I need to mull. Okay. All right. Well, let's go to the next category. You can mull while I'm talking about originality. Okay. So, so I gave originality a nine and a half. I actually mm-hmm. think this concept was really original. Uh, mm-hmm. I really loved the way they dealt with the question of Santa Claus's existence with cleverness. You know, mm-hmm. they never actually show him being Santa, just that mm-hmm. he's a nice man. 
Mm -hmm. Um, I think Dr. Pierce is the character that gives us the best look at the truth, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, But either way, though, I think this is creative and unique in its story. So nine and a half. What do you have for it? I gave it a nine as well. Uh, uh, By as well, I mean along with my nine for story. I was gonna say um, I was like, uh, I said, yeah, <laughs> are you listening or? But uh, I, I match my own uh, in the first category is what is anyway. But uh, no, uh, exact exact same stuff. It, it was very original and fun, and um, yeah, that's all. I don't feel like talking about it more. <laughs> all right, um, all right. So then let's go to uh, film coherence. So what do you have for that? I gave film coherence an eight and a half. I wasn't sure what to give it. It seemed perfectly coherent to me. So, I mean, except for like, there were some scenes where I was like, what's going on here? But that was like a lot more, I think things used to be weirder than they are. Yeah. And I'm just not used to how people used to do things. But nothing didn't fit. Maybe some things were like a little too silly out of left field, like the wife with the phone. But um, yeah, <laughs> it was very but- bizarre. But it is a family movie, so like, they were probably trying to inject a lot of silliness for the kids or something who go see it and are bored during the talking parts. Yeah, that's kind of how I took it too. Um, well, I gave eight an eight and a quarter. Okay. I can't say that there's anything incoherent about it, you know. But I will mm-hmm. say that I think they could have been a bit more ambiguous in the storytelling. Yeah. Um, did we really need a scene at the post office? Yeah, that's true. I don't think it detracts or anything. It's just, I'm not sure it was necessary. I'm not sure that they, would, that, that they needed to have Dr. Sawyer not actually be a doctor. You know? Yeah. Like they made some interesting choices and I felt like they tended to steer toward obvious instead of subtle. That's um, true. And I also really never understood how Gailey was in their lives at all <laughs> and what the nature of their relationship was. The movie starts and he's in their house or their apartment. Right. It's like, okay. Without the here. mom. Like, yeah. All in all, though, it was it was a cohesive experience. So. Okay. Um, speaking of which, by the way, I'm going to bring my uh, acting down to a seven. Okay. That's still lower than an eight, but fair because I thought the leads were good. You're kind of you're kind of right though. You were talking, and a lot of the supporting actors were like pretty hammy. Yeah. Even, even a lot of not just center. not just a few, a lot of them were. Yeah. Um. All right. So the next category is cinematography which is going to be hard for all these older movies. Mm-hmm. So I gave it a seven. Okay. Um, I don't think they were doing anything special or trying to. Mm-hmm. I liked that they filmed on location instead of on a set though. I thought that mm-hmm. was a you know, good choice. Uh, that was a nice touch. Um, so I guess for that reason, I'll give it a seven. So I don't know. Maybe I'll go lower depending on what you say. What do you, what do you have for it? I gave it a six and a half. Um, I think I'm gonna change mine to a six and a half. Okay, <laughs> I have more sway than I realized. Um, I have to be careful. Have with to, that. You don't even have to tell me what it was. No, nope, I don't. <laughs> well, no, it was just not. It wasn't um, nothing great, but uh, perfectly <laughs> adequate is what I mean. But um, kind of distracting at times. Some of the scene changes and everything. Mm, yeah, I can see that. But that's okay. Nothing horrible. Like, like you know. Like we're always saying, six and a half is fine, you know? It really is, yeah. I wasn't mad while I was watching it. Damn this cinematography. It's not like it's bad cinematography. That's why I have such a hard time. Like, I'm not looking at going, boy, this is fucking awful. But it's like... Exactly, exactly. You know, it's not great either. True. Well, anyway, the next category is score slash soundtrack. What do you have for that? Give that a five. Um, I thought I just said... I was like, five is in the middle, right? Yeah. Well, actually, it's one to ten, so five is in the middle. But um, give it a five anyway, because I thought it was I thought it was really overdone with its use of Christmas music. I don't know where suddenly like it'd be a normal score and then it would just suddenly be Jingle Bells. It would be like, come on, like I get it, but come on. So like I'm not mad, but I could have done without a score altogether and I think it would have been fine. Yeah, I I gave it a six. So I was pretty much in agreement with you. It was okay. They basically did a few Christmas tunes and some hopeful instrumentals, you know? Yeah. yeah. I don't think that they really used the music all that well. That is to say that if it wasn't terrible, but just definitely not very good. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, especially coming off of The Bishop's Wife, which I think did really well with the score. 
So I agree. I agree, which is not even to say that necessarily it's better. Well, it is better, this, that, that particular That part. category is better, yeah. Yeah, um, the bishop's wife handled some of the emotional stuff a lot a lot more deftly, mm-hmm. whereas this this was, like, kind of over the top in some ways, emotionally, because it's trying to be so uplifting, whereas the bishop's wife is more, like, acknowledging, you know, some negative emotions and so forth than sadness, maybe. This, this was, like, no sadness, only happy, which is fine. <laughs> which is, yeah, it's fine. You know, it's a family movie. It's a different movie, so. Yeah. Um, all right, so the next category is script, structure, and dialogue. And I gave that a... Did I say that I gave score slash soundtrack a six? I think I did. You, you did, yeah. Okay. I gave uh, score, script, structure, and dialogue a 7.25. Mm-hmm. I think the dialogue was fine. Um, I think the structure needed a little work and that it was very focused on trying to get everything in instead of focusing on buttoning up the story, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the courtroom dialogue left a little to be desired. I don't know. This just, it doesn't seem like an Oscar movie to me. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I don't want to like, I, it doesn't mean I don't think it's a good movie or anything. It's just, it's fun. It's cute. But up for best picture, I just, I don't know. It's dead. It was very focused on being silly and fun, which isn't bad at all, but it just, it, it doesn't stretch believability. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I, I know exactly what you mean. And in fact, I gave mine a, six, a 6.75, so I'm pretty close to you. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. Just a little clunky in places, and the dialogue was fine. So, yeah. Like, if like if this, if this if I was in charge of these things and this crossed my desk, I'd be like, this is fine. Let's get it, let's get it made and make some money. Right, exactly. Exactly. This will be a thing and fun and nice for kids. Yeah, and I'm not going to, like... We don't need to punch it up, but I'm not also not going to rave about this necessarily. So yeah, but people did rave about it. So whatever, they were dumb back then, not as smart as us. <laughs> All right. Well, the next category I, I, on that great note, the next category is uh, character relatability. What should, what did you do for that one? I, I gave that an eight. I wasn't sure. I thought the characters were relatable, but also like very like over, like archetypical in a lot of ways. Like he's Santa, you know, and like. But I did, you know, somewhat relate to a lot of the positions that they had. Like, you should have more more whimsy in your life. But also, I also agree with, but you should be a realist in some ways. You should be a kid. But I also agree with, yes, but you have to learn some hard truths about the world at times. And I also agreed with, people think I'm fat and I should lose weight. <laughs> so, I really empathize with them. But, uh, yeah, so I liked it. I thought everyone was well done in, like, a... Broadway. They were supposed to be Broadway. <laughs> no, this is 34th Street. Um <laughs> and, and Broadway. It intersects right there. But uh they everybody was broad but purposefully because they weren't going for like deep nuance or anything like that. Right. So I actually gave character relatability an eight also. Oh, okay. I was sitting there explaining it because I was worried you were gonna give it way lower. <laughs> you thought I was gonna give it lower? That's interesting. Um, I think the characters are relatable for the most part. I don't really understand Sawyer's motivation that well. I guess mm-hmm. he didn't like to have his foibles pointed out by someone he considered crazy. I, I guess yeah. was the motivation. So it's there. Um, I think it could empathize, empathize with everyone, but at times it seemed very far fetched, which made yeah. it hard to relate. Um, okay. But you know, I mean, eight's a good score. I think. So. <laughs> yeah. <that's a> good <laughs> so. Um, all right. So the next category is production value. And I gave that a 7.75. Okay. I liked that they were on location. This is a clever way to have good set pieces, as you can use the already existing dis- you know, displays in these department stores, right? I think that was clever, and I think it shows an ingenuity in production value. But other than that, I don't know that there was really all that much extra production production value. So, there you go. What do you, what'd you give it? Well, I actually gave it an 8.25, because I actually really appreciated that they filmed so much on location. And watching not necessarily so much this last time i watched it but while i was watching it while we were talking about it after you mentioned because you said that they you know they had trouble filming at macy's but they still did Mm -hmm. um i was looking at it and i was like i actually hadn't entirely appreciated quite how decent everything looks because they're on location they're really out there on the street etc so i really appreciated that yeah that is cool i'm okay I think I'm, I'm still happy with what I gave it. It's pretty close to what you gave it, so. Works for me. All right, so now the next, the, the, the last category. This is the big one, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Timelessness. What do you have for that? I think I'm going to surprise you, actually. I gave Timelessness a 10. 
I think it's obviously proven itself to be extremely timeless, and I'm not yeah. even going to go any further than that. Like, people still love this movie, and it's years later. So, yeah, you know, I gave it a nine and a half, but I'm going to change it to a ten. Okay. Because I don't know how much more ti- like how is it? Yeah. How do you have a more perfect score than this? You know? Exactly. Um, there are there are other movies that are as timeless, but it, you kind of don't get more so. Right. Yeah, I completely agree. It's just I haven't given a ten in timelessness. There. So yeah, I mean it's it's pretty obvious for this one to be high in the timelessness ranking as it's mm-hmm. a Christmas classic. So um, people still watch to this day, as you were, as you pointed out, and I think it's preferred to the remake from the nineties, mm-hmm. right? Um, so having seen it for the first time, I will say I can see why it's considered a Christmas classic. Yeah. It if if I didn't hate watching movies every year. Oh my god! Like clockwork, I would appreciate seeing this come on and, and so forth because it's a it's a nice little fun time. It really is. So yeah, that's the whole rank. Um, I'm I'm guessing you're interested to hear how it fared. I would love to know. Well, it got a 157. Mm-hmm. So it didn't beat the Bishop's Wife. Bishop's Wife is still number one for 1947. Mm-hmm. Um, it did beat Million Dollar Baby in the Aviator. Okay. <laughs> you know, that all sounds about right to me. Yeah, it's did, just below I, Ray. Yeah. Oh, Which, just below Ray. Yeah, yeah. I can, I, I'm like, okay, yeah, I can yeah. deal with that. I think this is probably a little bit better than Ray, but um, I'm fine. And, and I also think The Bishop's Wife is decent. Uh, not quite a bit better, but better. So I'm okay with this. I think Bishop's Wife is a better film. Yeah. Um, but I think Miracle on 34th Street is more fun. Yeah, it's it's you can see why one is like a Christmas classic and one is a Christmas movie that some people watch. Right, exactly. It is not necessarily every damn time. Well, yeah, so that's it. That's the whole thing. Um, thanks, everybody, for listening. If you'd like to see an updated list of our rankings, you can see that on our website at therankwithjohnandzack.com. Check us out next week when we're ranking Aquaman. The 2018 DC movie starring Jason Momoa and Amber Heard and directed by James Wan. Another Christmas movie, huh? (laughs) No. Uh, Um, If if the action movie series isn't your thing, though. Join us in two weeks for the next movie in our Best Picture series, which is going to be Crossfire, the 1947 Best Picture nominee starring Robert Young, Robert Mitchum, and Robert Ryan. And I thought you were going to say something about Robert there, but... No, I I didn't know we were doing this movie. (laughs) So that's the next one. Yes, the next... I just didn't know it existed. So (laughs) there we are. It is a lot of Roberts. Is it like all the Roberts are fighting over who gets to be Robert? Yeah, that's exactly the the whole story. That's what's Crossfire, yeah. That's what I thought. This is brand new information to me. (laughs) So I'm going into this one fresh. Do you remember the scene in The Mask um, where Dorian Tyrell is wearing the mask and he like chews up all the bullets and starts spitting them all out like he's a gun. Do you remember that mm-hmm. part? Yeah, um, that's what um, this is. That's that's a play on Crossfire. The whole thing is just yeah, that. Yeah, they're spitting bullets at each other. I love it. To see who becomes the real robber. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it was also directed by Edward Dimitri. Dimitri. D-Y-M-Y-T-R-Y-K. Did you hear that spelling? Yeah. I did. It was great. It's a lot of whys. Anyway, goodbye. And time to wrap it up. Ho, ho, hope you'll be listening again soon. (laughs) I love it because it was a double. It totally got me. I liked the first one and then I liked it even better. (laughs) 